the thousand injuries of Fortunato I had borne as best I could. But when he ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge. You, <laughs> who know the nature of my soul, <laughs> or who think you do, will not suppose, however, that I threatened the man at length I would be avenged. Oh, this was a point definitely resolved. But my resolution precluded the idea of risk. I must not only punish, but punish with impunity. It was nearly dusk one evening during the supreme madness of the carnival season that I encountered my erstwhile friend. He accosted me with excessive warmth for he had been drinking heavily. He wore a tight-fitting costume of motley, and on his head was a conical cap and bells. I was so pleased to see him. My dear Fortunato, you are luckily met. Only today I have received a pipe, a full 60 cases of what is purported to be a Montiato, but I have my doubt. <laughs> A Montiato, a pipe <coughs> in the middle of carnival, impossible. Oh, I have my doubts, and I was foolish enough to pay the full Amontillado price without consulting you in the matter. You were not to be found, and I was fearful of losing a bargain. I have my doubts, and so I am on my way to Lucrezi. If anyone has a critical turn, it is he. <coughs> Lucrezi. Cannot tell Amontillado from Sherry. And yet some fools will have it that his taste is a match for your own. Come, let us go. Whither? And to your vaults. Oh, no, no, my friend, I will not impose upon your good nature. You have an engagement. No doubt, Lucrezia will. I <coughs> have no engagement. Come, my friend, no, it is not alone the engagement. I cannot help but perceive that you are afflicted with a severe cold. My vaults are insufferably damp. The walls are encrusted with nitre. Let us go. <coughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> Amontillado, indeed. I believe that you have been duped. As for... Lucrezi, he cannot distinguish Sherry from Amontillado. I made no answer, but suffered him to hurry me to my palazzo. My servants had fled. I had told them that I should not return until the morning, and had given them explicit orders not to stir from the house. These orders were sufficient, I well knew, to assure their immediate disappearance to carouse at carnival as soon as my back was turned. I took two torches, and giving one to Fortunato, led him down into the vaults where my wines were stored. We passed down a long and winding staircase until we came at length to the damp ground of the ancient vaults of my family, the catacombs of the Montresors. Fortunato's step was unsteady with drink, and the bells on his cap jingled as he asked, <coughs> Where is this Amontillado? It is farther on. He turned toward me and looked into my eyes with two filmy orbs that reflected his deep intoxication. Suddenly he was seized with a violent fit of coughing. <coughs> How long have you had that dreadful cough? My poor friend found it impossible to reply for many minutes. <coughs> It is nothing. Come, we will go back. Your health is precious to me. The wine is no matter. We will go back before you become ill. Besides, there is always Signore Lucrezi. Enough! My cough is nothing. It will not kill me. I shall not die of a cough. True. You will not die of a cough. I did not mean to alarm you unnecessarily. Here I uncorked a bottle which I drew from the racks which lined the moldy walls of my vaults. A draught of this Medoc will defend us against the damp. Drink. He raised the bottle to his lips 
and the bells on his cap jingled. I drink to the dead who are buried in your vaults. Oh, and I drink to your long life, Fortunato. We proceeded in our quest for the Amontillado. We passed along walls of the piled bones of my ancestors interspersed with casks of wine. These burial vaults of yours are endless. The Montresors were a great and numerous family. I paused again and seized Fortunato's arm. Come, we will go back. You're cold. Great is nothing. Let us go on. But first, <laughs> another draft of the Medoc. I handed him a second flagon. He emptied it at a breath. His eyes flashed with a fierce light, and he laughed insanely as he tossed the bottle upward with a gesticulation I did not understand. <laughs> You do not comprehend? Uh, not I. <laughs> then you are not of the Brotherhood. You are not a Mason. Uh, yes, yes. You? Impossible. A Mason? A Mason. A sign. Show me a sign. It is this here from beneath the folds of my cape. I produced a trowel. Yeah, you jest. But let us proceed to the Amontillado. Be it so. He leaned heavily upon me as we continued our search for the Amontillado. We descended farther and descended yet again until we arrived at a deep crypt where the foulness of the air caused our torches to glow rather than flame. The walls of the crypt were lined with human remains piled high to the vaulted ceiling overhead. From one of the walls, however, the bones had been pulled down and lay haphazardly upon the earthen floor, forming a mound of some size. Within the wall, thus exposed, could be seen a recess of about four feet deep, nearly three wide, and in height six or seven. It seemed to have been constructed for no special use, but merely formed the interval between two of the colossal supports of the roof of the vaults. It was backed with a solid wall of granite. Our feeble torches did not enable Fortunato to see the depth of the recess. Proceed. Herein is the Amontillado. He stepped forward unsteadily. I followed close at his heels. In an instant, he had reached the limit of the niche and finding his progress arrested by the wall of granite, stood stupidly bewildered. I pushed him face forward into the wall. A moment more, and I had chained him to the stone. In its surface were two iron staples about two feet apart. From one hung a short length of chain, from the other a padlock, throwing the chain about his waist before he could turn around. It was but the work of a moment to secure it. He was much too astounded to resist. I withdrew the key from the padlock and stepped back from the recess. Oh, pass your hand along the wall, dear Fortunato. You cannot help but feel the moisture, the nitre. We are below the river's bed. Once more, let me implore you to return for the sake of your health. Uh, no, then I must leave you. But first, I will accord you all the little attentions in my power. <coughs> but uh, the Amontillado. <laughs> yes, the Amontillado. As I said these words, I busied myself amid the mound of bones of which I spoke earlier. Throwing them aside, I uncovered a quantity of building stone, which I had placed there earlier in the day. I began working vigorously to wall up the entrance of the niche. I had scarcely laid the first tier of stone when I discovered that Fortunato's intoxication had begun to wear off. 
I heard a low moaning cry from the shallow depth of the recess. It was not the groan of a drunken man. I laid the second tier of stone and the third and the fourth. Then I heard the furious vibrations of the chain. The noise lasted for several minutes, during which that I might listen with more satisfaction. I ceased my labors and sat down upon the bones. <laughs> At last, the clanking stopped to be followed by a long and obstinate silence. I picked up my trowel and resumed my labors, finishing without interruption the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh tier. The wall was now at a level with my chest. I paused again and held my torch high over the masonwork to throw a few feeble rays upon the figure within. <laughs> a succession of terrified screams bursting suddenly from the throat of the chained form seemed to thrust me back. For a moment, I hesitated and trembled violently. Then, I, I placed my hands upon the solidity of the new mason work and felt reassured. It was now midnight. My task was drawing to a close. I completed the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth tier. I'd finished a portion of the last the eleventh, there remained but a single stone to be fitted and plastered in. I had placed it partially in position when there came from out of the niche a laugh that raised the hairs on my head. Then a sad voice, scarcely recognizable as that of the noble Fortunato babbled. <laughs> <laughs> a very good joke indeed, an excellent jest. We will have many a rich laugh about this over your mind, the Amontillado. <laughs> yes, the Amontillado. But is it not getting late? Will they not be waiting for us? The Lady Fortunato and the others, let us be gone. Yes, let us be gone. <laughs> For the love of God, my treasure. Yes, for the love of God. Fortunato? Fortunato? I waited in vain for a reply. I grew impatient. I called again, Fortunato. <laughs> Still no answer. All that came forth from the niche was the jingling of the bells. I hastened to make an end of my labor. I placed the last stone solidly in position and plastered it fast up. Against the new wall of masonry, I reapplied the old rampart of bones. For half a century, no mortal has disturbed them. In pacem requiescat, fortunato. <laughs>